So I expect most of you have now heard about this Freedom Pass nonsense. If you have not, then you are one of the lucky ones because it's complete lunacy and literally out of the CCP playbook, a bit like most of the policies we have seen in the UK this year. I say that because we're about five steps away from the UK's national language being changed to Mandarin at this point. I am sure if Boris could, he would have already done it under the guise of protecting you. Now, thankfully, Tory MP Steve Baker, among others, has taken a stand against this and any other form of coercion by the government to get people to follow these guidelines that, let's be honest, make no sense outside of micromanaging their everyday lives, a bit like we see in China. He is, for the most part, on point during the Radio 4 interview we are going to look at today. A few things I do not agree with, but that is life. Sometimes you have a common goal while disagreeing on plenty of other things. The common goal here is freedom of the UK, which is what we fought for with Brexit. This is no different to that, because our very freedoms are at stake here. Steve Baker knows that, and he also knows the government exercising power like this will have lasting effect. These laws passed this year will be here for years to come, even after all this is forgotten, because that is what emergency laws do unless the people and MPs stand up against them. And I'm not just talking one or two MPs like Steve Baker, I'm talking about MPs on all sides of the House and a lot of them at that. So far, there is about 70 of them who are joining Steve Baker against this lockdown, but like I've said, we need many more, and we also need the Labour Party to become an opposition. Because on top of all that, towards the end of the clip I will show you, he mentions the latest government analysis of the first lockdown that has shown it cost more in terms of people's life chances than it saved from anything, and with the attack on our civil rights this government has done over the past few months, he is worried that the government will not return us to the normal life we should be leading once it's over, or should have been leading all year to be honest. Take the mask mandate which has just been rubbished in a peer-reviewed medical journal by a Norwegian team, something we knew already. Because if a cloth mask works against the virus, then a sock stops a woman getting pregnant if you whack it over your dick before ploughing balls deep into her. The condom industry has just been finished by the mask mandate if that is the level of science we are going on this year. The new normal is what they want, and the freedom pass is the way to get there, meaning we we have to stand against that bullshit. We can only hope the MPs in Parliament do the same when the time comes soon enough. But don't hold your breath on that one, the odd few might be all we get, a bit like last time with the lockdown. Now enough of me talking, let's hear from Steve Baker himself before I end this video and get on to making another one. Are you reassured by some of the reports um, that are around this morning, the expectations of what the Prime Minister will say, um, going some way towards what you set out in your letter at the weekend, including things like the 10pm closing time being relaxed and the opening of all shops in all areas? Yes, we are reassured. You know, we, we talked about outside sport, 10pm cl uh, curfew, retail gyms, you know, swimming pools, very important. And so on, as you suggest, uh, worship, of course, is also very important. And I am reassured. But I should say this, in, in a sense, I'm not wholly surprised because we did talk with ministers last week and they knew our concerns. We are still working in a collegiate fashion. So, yes, I am reassured. But it's still the case that where there are restrictions, we do want to be sure that they are going to have an impact on slowing the trans transmission of COVID. And we want to know that whatever is proposed will save more lives than they cost. Therefore, you still want what you called in that letter a full cost-benefit analysis of the proposed restrictions? Well, yes. <laughs> and I think it's a very modest and reasonable thing to ask for. When, when uh, the, the Department for Health did its own cost-benefit analysis of the first lockdown, they found that in quality-adjusted life years, adjusted for comorbidities, that the first lockdown had done more harm than good. And, you know, for those of us who are representing real people with real suffering, let's not forget, if you're in hospitality and your waiting staff, probably half your income is tronk, that is shared tips. That means if you're on furlough, you're not getting 80% of your normal income, you're getting 40%. So, you know, we do need to stand up for people because we know that livelihoods matter. We know that there's nothing quite like poverty for shortening your life and diminishing your life chances. So all of these things continue to matter. I really welcome the great news about a vaccine. That means we've got about four months, I think, to get through until the vulnerable are vaccinated. But in that time, we really do need to look after everyone. And if you don't get what what you want between now and the moment that you're likely to to vote on the new system, probably early, early next week, what happens? How do you vote? 
Well, I think we'll have to hear what the Prime Minister says before we decide uh, how we're voting. But there is, of course, always a danger that colleagues will vote against. Sir Charles Walker, I don't think, would mind me saying that this letter was too moderate for him to sign. Uh, Sir Graham Brady obviously also took a strident, principled view about civil liberties. I stood up in the House and said I agreed with them both. Um, I'm very concerned about the proposed freedom uh, pass, the idea of using implied coercion to, uh, br- you know, in a sense, force people into mass a- asymptomatic testing. That is very problematic. So all of these things need to be discussed properly. But there is good news. The government has moved. And, you know, we're not here just to be difficult. We want to be constructive and to help mm. the government serve the public. But I, I wonder then how you, well, what kind of stance you'd like to see the government take over Christmas? Because the expectation at the moment it, is that there will be a, a relaxation, perhaps for five days, perhaps for three households. We don't know the detail as yet. But then there might well have to be some kind of restriction further on. Would you rather have something put in place at the end of this English lockdown that is sustainable so that perhaps you don't relax over Christmas and that would mean you don't have to restrict again? Well, uh, what I'm, if I may, just take a slightly different perspective. This is a major infringement on the right to a family life. I'm got, looking at the European Convention on Human Rights as I speak to you. Now, there are various caveats in that convention that allow governments to infringe upon the rights within them for the purposes of protecting public health. So in a sense, it's a political choice where you, the pain lies. But I would like to see the government acknowledge just how deeply they're infringing upon people's rights in throughout dealing with this pandemic and to reassure the public that we'll be returning to the normal situation on human rights once the vulnerable are vaccinated. Because I think one of the most frightening things of this whole episode has been just how easy it has been for the government to infringe under the Public Health Act 1984 and on, onto the rights of people who are not potentially infectious. And that, that has been genuinely frightening. Steve Baker, MP, thank you. Now, thanks for watching, guys. Let me all know what you think down in the comments section below. As always, hit the like button and subscribe with the notification bell if you've not already to get around YouTube's bullshit censorship mission that has been going on for the past month or more and do the same for the other channels you watch, guys. Everyone is taking a hit during this shadow ban wave, so support the creators you like to watch and do it on other social media platforms also. Mine are all linked down below, as they always are. But on top of that, I have started a Rumble account, and there is a couple of more social media platforms popping up that I'm going to try and join soon. So be ready to support me on there if you want to. You never know how long you've got left on any platform these days. There is a pattern consistent throughout history of oppressed people turning on the oppressors, slaves against their owners, the peasantry against the feudal barons, colonies, Mr. Verhofstadt, against their empires. (laughs) And that is why Britain is leaving. And it doesn't matter which language you use, we are going and we are glad to be going. We're off.